Well, welcome everyone to Money and Meaning, Kinder Institute of Life Planning's blog, where we tell the stories of registered life planners from around the globe. I'm Laura Woodward, Communications Director for Kinder Institute, and this is our I'm a Registered Life Planner series. I'm thrilled today to be joined by Sydney Devine, founder of Divine Wealth Strategies based in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome, Sydney. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Laura. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to have you here. So let's just start by hearing a bit of your backstory. How did you get into financial services? So I got into financial services after taking a class at my college. I kind of say it's the only class that I remember. We essentially got to play the stock market game and talk to our classmates about what we were buying and why. And I'm like, I have found it. I have to do this. Uh, In fact, literally that same day, um, I ended up going to the Career Center and I'm like, hey, I, I, I found the one. What do I do? And they ended up um, getting me involved with an internship with AFLAC um, at the time, right? So a local AFLAC office where I essentially was the cold caller, setting up meetings for everyone. Um, I was offered an opportunity to join that particular office, but yeah, we were doing insurance and I was like, this wasn't anything like the stock market game. Like, yeah, I was good on the phones, but nothing like the stock market game. So I decided to um, interview at other firms. And of course, everyone gave the line of, you know, you need five years of experience before we can hire you. And I'm just like, uh, that's impossible because I've been in college. Uh, But eventually I got with a firm that in a way took a chance on me and um, it gets it worked out then. uh, And I'm still in financial services. But now I've transitioned as of almost four years to my own firm. Um, So, yeah, that's how we got started. Yeah, that's great. And so how did you end up finding Kinder Institute of Life Planning? So one of the things that I, I guess, was consumed with was success. So um, the company that I worked for, they had a list of their top 50 financial planners. Mm -hmm. Uh, And after kind of going through the traditional sales program, if you will, um, I said, you know what, there's probably more to this thing than, you know, just selling insurances or placing products. So I decided to send everyone on that top 50 list an email to see if they would be willing uh, to allow me to pick their brains. And um, some responses were interesting, uh, but there was one of the 50 that I actually got to chat with um, who stood out more than the others, right? And he stood out from the perspective of, we're in an insurance-based company Um, And this guy says to me, um, if someone doesn't want to engage in the life planning process, I'm simply not the right person for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he says, morally and ethically, if I don't know the client, I can't recommend what's in their best interest. And I'm like, you know, that's different because, again, talk to 50 of the best, supposedly. And he's the only one who had that type of conviction. And it's funny because back then I'm like, wait, so someone has like $2 million and they don't want to go through your little process. You're not the person for them. And he stood his ground. He said, absolutely. Um, I, I'm just not the person for them because I can't recommend what's in their best interest without knowing them. So after scratching my head for a lot, uh, because I'm like, who does that? Um, he, I guess was in a really interesting uh, point in his life. Uh, so he followed back up with me after I you know, said thank you for the time. And he offered me the uh, opportunity to mentor um, mm-hmm. with him or you know, be his mentee. It was interesting because back then I was like, you know, I don't really think I want to be like this guy when I grow up. Because uh, if someone has you know, $2 million, I don't necessarily want to turn them down because they don't want to engage in the process. But over time, I think I became like that guy. So that was how I um, started the process. And I don't know if we can say his name, but it's Stephen Brody. Uh, If you get to watch this dude, love you, uh, miss you, (laughs) haven't seen you in a while. Uh, But yeah, so that's kind of how I got um, started with Kinder. So through the mentoring process, I started researching on my own. He gave me a couple books that he said to read. I started asking the question. So essentially I was doing life planning light. Yeah. And after getting back, um, you know, answers from the clients, I hit a, a little, you know, bump where I'm like, what do I do from here? And he's like, well, it may be time for you to start with the two day, 
then do the five day and see if you want to continue from there. I remember going to the two day, like this is, yeah, this isn't going to be it. Like I'll probably do the two day, get everything that I need to continue to ask the questions and get over that particular bump that I find myself hitting with clients answers. And then I'll be fine. And little did I know that um, after day one of the two day, I would be signing up for the five day in the exact same year. So what was it about the two day that really just changed things for you? Oh, man, like so it definitely gave me some some more answers into, you know, why is it that when I'm asking these questions, folks are opening up to an extent that they've never opened up before. And I thought I did a pretty decent job of kind of uncovering a lot of things, Mm -hmm. but it spoke more to, I guess, the psychology, right? Like the, we talked about like the seven stages and I'm like, oh, there's more to, there's more to money than um, just money. I guess it just, you know, after kind of going through day one, I'm like, okay, well, there's going to be a point in time where I may hit another bump. So why not just go all the way in? And then what was also appealing was that I did the two day in Massachusetts Mm -hmm. and I ended up doing the five day uh, at a horrible place called Hana. Right. (laughs) Uh, And this was like in December. So it was colder in Atlanta then. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, Hana isn't too bad. So I know you became a registered life planner in 2018. So you've taken uh, the two day, the Evoke course, and then you've gone on through our uh, life planning mentorship. Mm -hmm. So how did things change for you in terms of how you were working with your clients after earning your registered life planner designation? So I think they started to change even before I earned the designation, Mm -hmm. because as a part of like the mentorship, you had to present cases and talk about what you were doing. So, you know, going from light to, okay, I I know a little bit about what I'm doing. I'm, I'm able to at least hold the space for the client. But I think the most overwhelming change from the client's perspective is just seeing them be okay with doing the things that they they want to do, right? Like I remember when I came back from um, HANA, I had a, a very interesting meeting where I'm asking the questions to this particular client who had recently gone through a divorce and we're, we're kind of opening up and she's sharing and I, I kid you not, she slams on the table and she's like, I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Greece. And I'm like, you know, I, I want you to go to Greece too, right? And Yeah. Then she started going through all the obstacles and whatnot. And it was really cool to kind of see it realized, but her sending a picture and saying like, this wouldn't have happened were it not for you. And, you know, like as much as that makes me feel good, I'm like, no, you took the steps to do what it is that you needed to do to get to where you said you wanted to go. Um, I was just there and I appreciate you allowing me to be a part of the journey. So yeah, that's kind of how it's, um, you know, how it's developed or evolved over time. Mm-hmm. And so how have you been able to, uh, like, have you basically changed your whole way of delivering financial planning uh, as a result of the Kinder's Method? Or how have you integrated into your practice? I think more of an integration than a straight up change. How I've kind of integrated is in the initial meeting, my discovery is where I'm essentially asking the life planning questions towards the end of the discovery. And yeah, most clients or potential clients have never heard those questions before. So, you know, they're just like, oh, well, that's deep. But then we also follow up with, here are the exercises now that you you essentially have had more time to think about those answers. Let's see if anything changes. So when they come back for their prelim, essentially, we're looking at those questions and we're starting to kind of go through the process of, okay, what could possibly get in the way, lighting the torch. And I think one of the things that I, I got from Brody and the late Dr. Ed was you have to meet the clients where they are, right? So in a way, I think how it's kind of come through, come to fruition has been, we're doing life planning even though we don't necessarily have to say, oh, well, this is now, this is now a separate part of what we're doing, right? right? Like it's, it's, an, it's basically integrated into our process to where we could do it at any point in any of our meetings. Mm-hmm. And it's just, 
you know, it's just seamless, if you will. Yeah. Right? So yeah, that's perfect because I mean, in some ways, there's uh, clients come out of our program thinking, oh, now I'm a life planner. I have to call it life planning. But what you're describing is great because it just integrating it into your financial planning process and making it seamless is a way for your clients to, to not see it as something completely different. Because what we think of life planning is just financial planning done right. Exactly. And you're kind of describing a way of delivering that to your clients. Yeah, and it, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you get on a, on a flight, your pilot doesn't necessarily tell you the inner workings of, you know, the 747 or whatever that you're on. Right. But your your pilot is getting you from where you want Definitely. to go in comparison to where you are. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of how we look at it. Right. Like it's getting done um, and we're helping you get from where you are to where you want to go. Yeah, that's great. So one of the aspects of our evoke training in particular is that you get life planned. Yeah. And one of our expectations of any life planner is that they are living into their life plan. So can you tell us a bit about how what what changed for you and how are you living into your life plan? I think that was the biggest thing. In fact, when folks reach out to pick my brain about life planning, they're always like, how has it like helped your business? Like, you know, do you track where you were before and, you know, after you did Kinder's training? And I'm like, you know, honestly, I think it's more of what you get out of it as the planner, right? Like, I think that's what helps you do what you do for the clients, mm -hmm. because ultimately, if you're not living the life, you can't help your clients live their life, right? As Brody uh, would say back in the day. Um, you can only take clients as far as you've gone yourself, right? And I love that because back then I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, I don't have a million dollars and I'm talking to people about them having a million dollars. It was completely something different, but still meaningful, right? You can only take clients as far as you've gone yourself. So for me, um, I was like an extreme workaholic. I mean, I got into an industry that said that I you know, needed five years of experience. I felt fortunate. But I also felt like it came with, um, you know, you're not guaranteed to be here, right? Like the failure rate was like 90% within the first three years. So for me, I felt like I didn't necessarily know everything, still don't, um, hard to admit, Laura, still don't know everything, but um, I was going to outwork everyone. So I was the guy who was at the office at like five in the morning. There wasn't much of balance. In fact, my value prop to clients was you won't meet anyone who will work as hard for you as I am. And this one client of mine was like, you know, that sounds good, but I'm worried that you're going to like burn out. And, and Kinder and me being life plan kind of brought in, there's more to life than the work that I do, right? Or I am more than the work that I do. So after leaving there, um, yeah, I would say that you guys are responsible for my golf addiction now. I basically started um, started to take golf lessons because it was something that I've always wanted to do. I also started my own firm, which was something that I did not know that I wanted to do because I'm extremely loyal and literally felt like, you know, I'm going to work with this company who took a chance on me until I'm like 70, right? But as we started having different changes, I found it very, very hard to stay aligned in a way with my clients and with my purpose. And I don't think that I would have been as comfortable or secure in that decision without having gone through the life planning process. Um, so I, yeah, I literally will tell people all the time, like 2017, because that was when we were in um, HANA, yeah. um, that me coming back from HANA was like, there's a different me. Like there was just like a, a sense of purpose and it wasn't just one dimensional as it relates to just work, right? It's like, oh, I want to be a better golfer or, or at least hit the golf ball when I try to hit it. I want to have experiences outside of just work. It's, it was, um, it was life-changing for me and naturally coming back, it made it easier because why would you not want that for your clients, right? Like, why would you not want them feeling like there is more to life than all the things that they worry about, all the concerns that they have? So what would be a piece of advice that you would give to a life planner that's just starting out on their journey? So if they haven't signed up yet, sign up um, and sign up more so from the perspective of the, you know, the effects that it's going to have on you. 
because mm -hmm. it has to start with you before it can trickle on to your clients' lives. Um, I think some clients, you know, at least from the very beginning when they saw this dude is working, 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 they got to see that shift in me, right? They, they got to see it and it's like, oh, well, it is okay, right? And that's the whole, you know, you can only take them as far as you've gone yourself. So if you're just starting and you haven't started yet, start. Mm -hmm. That's the first piece of advice. And if you've already started, I think most people struggle with the, oh, well, now I have to do the financial plan, then I have to do the life plan, let's do the life plan first. You don't necessarily have to switch everything that you were doing that's been working. And I don't think the Kinder Institute says that you have to either, right? But it's kind of like this misconception that, oh my goodness, it has to be this way. Ultimately, your goal is to leave your clients better off than what you found them. Um, and you've gotten the tools in terms of like listening, in terms of holding the space for them, in terms of lighting their torch. Just do that, right? Like just do that. But keep keep the main thing the main thing. You're leaving them better off than what you found them. Uh, and everything else is going to fall into place, especially if you're, le you're leading your life, right? Like you're living your life plan. So that's my words of wisdom for you, you young Kinder Institute folks. <laughs> so anything else that you'd like to share no that's it you know george is the only celtics fan that i actually love and i have family who live in the massachusetts area so um you know i appreciate everything that he's done for me and yeah you know, just learning all that i've learned i appreciate brody i've appreciated the folks that i actually went to the five day with um, some of us are still in touch they're my tribe. They're my family. And um, I do anything for them. And I'm sure the feeling's mutual. Oh, well, this was such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Sydney. I appreciate your time and all of your words of wisdom about life planning. Enjoyed it. Thank you for having me, Laura. Yeah, you're welcome.